Hi everyone, my name is Maya and I am an activity coordinator at Lurie Children's, but today we are not at the hospital. We are actually in beautiful Hyde Park at the DuSable Black History Museum and Education Center. Today we'll be taking a look inside to learn a little bit more about African American history and Chicago. So now we are inside the DuSable Museum right at the entrance and I am here with Perry who is going to be talking to us today a little bit about the museum itself and the history of DuSable. Yeah, I love the fact that you all are, uh, chose this museum to highlight. This museum is the oldest African American history museum in the country. And so it was founded in 1961 by Dr. Margaret Burroughs and at the time it was originally called the Ebony Museum of Negro History and Art. And so right around 1961, we call that in history like the middle of the civil rights era. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Burroughs was a phenomenal lady. Uh, she looked around and realized that there was nothing really dedicated to telling the history and culture of African-American people here in the United States. So this museum, as I said, is the oldest African-American history museum, but it was started just in the basement of her home. And it's so important to highlight that history and the fact that it wasn't highlighted in the beginning and someone like Dr. Burroughs saw that need and decided to create a museum even in the basement of her home. Yeah, well, she was among many things. She was an educator, she was an activist, and she was also an artist. So as she traveled, her travels took her a lot to Africa. So she would collect artifacts and a lot of things. And so she would put them, a lot of these artifacts in the window of her home. And so people would want to know more about it. And so that is uh, another inspiration to why she decided to start the museum, just to give people a place to go see these things that you wouldn't see in you know, other museums or, and things like that, so. Absolutely. So just kind of walk us a little bit um, through the mosaic that we see behind us. Who do we see pictured here? Sure, so this is Jean Baptiste Point du Sabo. When Dr. Burroughs originally named the museum, it was the Ebony Museum of Negro History and Art, but then in 1968, decided to change the name to John Baptiste Point du Sabo. Now in African American history, we call that the Black Power Era. So a lot of that was going back and getting, reclaiming some of our history in the United States. You know, in 1968 is when we get the first Black Studies program in San Francisco. That's when you get Black is Beautiful and Black Power, a lot of that. And so as to go along with the history, not a lot of people knew that Chicago was founded by a Black man. And so John Baptiste Point du Sabo was uh, Haitian and French, and he came here about 1764 to the United States and worked his way up from, the, from Louisiana up the Mississippi River. And he settled here uh, right about the north mouth of the Chicago River. And he stayed here until for about 10 years where he sold his property in 1800. But no one really knows what uh, DuSabo looks like. So you'll see a lot of facial renderings of him throughout the city and throughout this museum. Okay. But this is a pretty good representation of what his uh, land property would have looked like. Yeah, and looking at this, it reminds me of like a pioneer settlement. Would DuSable be considered like a black pioneer? Sure, I would say that. He was a trader, you know, he was a fur trader, but then he also had, you know, smoke houses. He had, you know, dairy farm and things like that. And so when he moved here, it was still, you know, Illinois was still, you know, a lot of swampy kind of, you know, land or whatever. But when he settled along that bank and grew his section, it was really just successful. And so that is kind of like the founding of Chicago. That's incredible. And I don't know about you guys, but I had no idea that Chicago was founded by a black man. And to know this history and to know that this exists and that this is accessible to us is such a great thing. So Perry, when we take a look at the mosaic, I also noticed that there are some Native Americans that are pictured here. Can you tell us a little bit more about their relationship with DuSable? Sure. Well, it's important to note that although DuSaba was the first non-indigenous settler of Chicago, there were many Native nations here. And as a matter of fact, he married a Potawatomi woman uh, and had two children. Okay. So another cool thing is that all the murals in this building or in this entranceway were commissioned by Dr. Burroughs herself. They were done by African-American artist Thomas Miller. 
Wow. And so now we're actually going to be taking a look more in depth to Dr. Burroughs with Sydney. Sydney, can you tell us a little bit about where we are in the museum? Absolutely. So right now we are standing in Southside Stories, the art and influence of Dr. Margaret T. Burroughs, who of course is our museum's wonderful founder. Um, she started this museum, like Perry mentioned earlier, in 1961, and we moved into this building in 1973. And what's really beautiful about this exhibit is when you first come into this space, we are hit with the work of our founder. And in this space, we celebrate her work in four major themes. Um, we look at her work as an activist, as a creator, as a mentor, and as a placemaker. She started this museum in 61 and moved to this space in 1973. And doing that, she put collection clans all around the city and said, hey, help build a Negro history museum in this city. And so people had to come in um, and put in their own money and their effort and time to see the, um, this, this building come into fruition to be the building and the history museum for black people that she wanted to see. That's incredible and that's such a great story behind it that she really wanted to see this happen and all of the effort that she put into making sure that this was a place for the community and for a place for African Americans to really be seen and showcased. So I know for us at Lurie Children's we're all about bringing your voice, the children's voice, to the forefront and making you understand that you matter and that your voice matters. And so it's incredible to see this showcasing some children. Can you talk to us about her as a creator? Absolutely. Dr. Burroughs was a prolific artist and her signature type of work were these really beautiful um, ink prints on paper like the one you see behind us. Whenever I bring youth groups into this space, I like to point out this image um, because you see kids and you don't often see children um, experiences shown in museums and so for them to see themselves they feel like they have a place to belong they feel like they um, can be history makers for later on um, that type of artwork she would create by carving into these like really large wooden blocks um, covering them with ink afterwards after you get a really nice design um, and then cover um, them over with a piece of paper and then you peel them off and you have a, um, a print, just like a, a printing press for a newspaper or something. Wow. And what was really beautiful about that, like this goes back to that kind of like activism and the placemaking where Dr. Burroughs, she would create these prints in droves and like really huge numbers because then she would hand them out to community members because she wanted everybody to have the artwork and everyone to have access um, to beauty and to creation and this ability and knowledge that you can express yourself in so many different ways. Um, like this painting behind us, it's acrylic on canvas. She's exploring um, a bunch of different like mass types and colors like you might see um, um, in different African masks. She traveled really extensively throughout West Africa and so brought back home a lot of those um, kind of techniques and images and figured out how to translate them into her, um, her own practice and how to combine this African and this African American experience. Yeah, that's so important. And I know that I'm probably having some artists out there watching us right now. Do you have any advice for any of our viewers if they are interested in art? Like, how can they kind of learn more? Absolutely. One, come visit us here at the DuSable Black History Museum and Education Center if and when you can. Um, and then also just explore as much art as you can. Um, anything can be art. Your art is your activism. Dr. Burroughs was an activist. That's another theme that we really hearken and, and explore in this space. Um, not only through building the museum, but through her artwork as well, showing people like Malcolm X and Mahalia Jackson, who we understand to be the voice of the gospel movement. Um, fun fact, if you all hadn't known, um, but Mahalia Jackson was um, this really wonderful gospel singer who sang at the um, March on Washington as well as the March on Selma. And she's actually the one who inspired Dr. King to change his speech during that I Have a, King, I Have a Dream speech, um, because his it was going off into a direction that she wasn't necessarily loving. She said from, after, from behind after she sang, she said, tell him about the dream, Martin. And when you talk about activism, that makes me think about the civil rights movement. You mentioned Dr. Martin Luther King. What was going on around the time of civil rights and why do you think Dr. Burroughs felt it so important to highlight this museum during that time? Dr. Burroughs, she 
came up in a time, she moved up during the, like right during the migration and like there's this moment where um, people are just demanding change and wanting change and like needing this space to celebrate themselves and their culture. Um, so that movement from civil rights into black power really created this beautiful space to create a black history museum to empower young people to know who they were, to know um, their history, to know that they can like push forward and um, be great like those who came before them and they can't know them unless there's a space for them to explore them. So I encourage you all to find your own um, form of expression and explore that um, in however many ways that you feel um, that you need or want or want to explore um, because it really opens up doors for again your own activism for knowing and understanding yourself and that was really the work of this museum and the work of Dr. Burroughs is like finding your voice and telling your own stories. Like I mentioned this exhibit is called South Side Stories and um, each of the pieces in this space really does that work. It tells a story of home, of Chicago, of um, being on the South Side and doing that through artistic expression. And the important thing to know is that we all have our own unique story and all of our stories are important to tell. So whatever your form of expression is, whether it be dance or it be art, we want you guys to really tap into your creativity and show that to the world. So now we have traveled down into the lower level of the DuSable Museum, and I am here with Dr. Kim Dulaney, and I'm gonna have her introduce herself. Hi, I'm Dr. Kim L. Dulaney, and I am the Vice President of Education and Programs here at DuSable Museum. Great, and so as I mentioned, we're in the lower level now. What are some things that we can find in this section of the museum? We're standing in front of the Equiano exhibition, this was something that we made to accompany a film that we made. It's Equiano.Stories. It can be found on TikTok and uh, Instagram. We partnered with Stello Stories. They really produced it and then brought us on uh, as consultants and to help out uh, with the integrity of the film. I heard what happened. The beauty of this story, this is based on a true story, uh, Aluda Equiano. He was 11 years old. It shows about his family in Africa before he was taken into slavery. That's the part that made the story so interesting to me as a student, as a professor, and now as an educator at the museum, is that uh, we get to get a glimpse into African culture and what it was like and see the fun things and things that some are somewhat recognizable often. So that's really exciting. Yeah, and absolutely. You mentioned Equiano was only 11, so being able to see it through the lens of a child absolutely. and how his experience was, I think that's such an important one to highlight. Yes, this is so important because African-American history starts in Africa, like Italian-American history starts in Italy, Polish-American history starts in Poland, African-American history starts in Africa. We're excited to help kids understand that because oftentimes the textbooks left that part out and we think we started in slavery. Mm. So we're deconstructing and reconstructing that narrative and showing people this cool part of this legacy and heritage that they didn't know. Absolutely, and just talking about African-American history beginning in Africa, we have so many pieces to our history. It's a rich one and it's a deep one. And so being able to be here at the DuSable Museum really breaks that down for anyone coming in to really understand that on a deeper level, is that right? Absolutely, the role of DuSable Museum, we recently branded to DuSable Museum and Education Center because narratives rule the world, right? Right? The stories people tell shape our understanding. Well, uh, somebody has to add the African-centered voice to that, and that's our role at DuSabo. We also understand that we're educating people. Whenever we tell a story, the, what we choose to say, what we choose to highlight, it shapes people's understanding. So we wanted to be intentional about that. And the pieces in here are pieces that we had in our own collection all these years. They're from West Africa. Equiano was from Nigeria. They're not necessarily from where he was from, but they're from that region. And yes. so, and we've had people of Equiano's culture, Igbo people come in, even cry in the exhibition to say it's so authentic feeling. And they, it's been great care taken to kind of replicate what you might have seen. So it's really exciting. Yes, it's so exciting. And just looking around the museum, like you said, there are so many emotional pieces to our history. And I think 
being able to really take this in and take a look at other sides of our history that may not be as pretty is equally as important as celebrating all of the beauty of our culture too. Absolutely. So what, when you come in, you start in Africa, then it's kind of simulated and looks like the ocean you walk through and then you walk into a summary of African American history. In black studies, there are generally seven historical periods. That's, it begins in Africa, Africa, slavery, reconstruction, migration, civil rights, black power, and then post-60s, which hasn't been named yet because we're living in those times. And so, as you said, some parts are very celebratory. Some parts are, it's our obligation to just keep a record of Absolutely. the other things that have happened. Thank you so much. And I'm just learning so much today. I hope that you guys are learning. And so next we're going to actually take a look inside the Equiano exhibit to take a look at some of those special artifacts that you mentioned earlier. Great. Wow, that was so much fun, and I hope you learned a lot. I know I did today. So we hope that you come and visit the DuSable Museum, again, located right here in Washington Park on the south side of Chicago, and we hope to see you next time. Bye.